welcome to the latest edition of Import Stories. Today, we have with us Mr. Sujit Shivanand, who is going to share his thoughts and nostalgia about the time he lived in Tangasheri. Let's listen to his stories. it's very different from the rest of kerala you know that's that's what makes thangasheri very unique uh, it has its own history uh, like this small little island of a place within kerala uh, which had its own history from the early 16th century where the portuguese came then they built a fort there then later in the 17th century the dutch come then later the british come it it all made uh, this little place so different in terms of its culture the architecture of thangasheri was a unique experience because for anybody coming into thangasheri for the first time um, these parallel streets and avenues cutting them at right angles uh, every housing lot is a geometric lot and um, then you see all these nice uh, old colonial bungalows and uh, cottages um, then these um, stations of the cross at every street corner and this was totally different and uh, completely different from the rest of kerala you know? so that's an experience in terms of archaeological relics um, now what exists is only a part of that fort thomas which is still there Uh, but um, back in the 60s uh, there used to be two significant archaeological sites there one was the dutch uh, cemetery and the the portuguese cemetery and um, that was on the road going towards the lighthouse uh, th- that cliff property on either side there was um, these two cemeteries and um, there was also a bungalow below the portuguese cemetery uh, and that belonged to a family called the van spols i remember one of those um, graves in the portuguese cemetery was had a name uh, had a family name van spol so that could have been one of their um, their ancestors but sadly that both those archaeological sites were destroyed and that was really criminal act done uh, with in by by the politicians who actually encouraged people to initially settle on the roads there um, and then kind of move in and destroy that 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 was really very bad and nobody did anything and that's very shameful because uh, indian archaeological survey should have considered that as important as any other property any other archaeological site uh, just because it was um, the cemeteries of the colonial um, uh, colonial powers that ruled uh, that part of uh, india during some time it doesn't mean that it was not a, a part of india's history that was very sad uh, and very shameful that it was destroyed Yeah it was common for certain people to have nicknames and the whole family to have that nickname um but some of them of course were derogatory so i don't want to mention any of those names here <laughs> the interesting thing about these nicknames was that most of these nicknames were in malayalam for some reason or the other it appeared that malayalam was a better language to create an irritating nickname for somebody <laughs> yeah we had this yahoo group uh, called infant jesus tangasheri right from 1998 and i think it was somewhere a couple of years into this group um, that we had this nicknames contest there as a prize for whoever provides the largest or the longest list of nicknames and somebody from australia i think won that uh, competition and in it ran into over 100 nicknames uh, that were popular in thangasheri i still have that list with me though i don't want to disclose it <laughs> i would say that most of them were very nice people the anglo indians they were excellent people we had great friends among them and uh, they were um, in many respects uh, more forward thinking than the rest of kerala 
uh, even if you consider Kerala of today, I would think they were far more um, forward thinking specifically in terms of uh, human relationships. I think they always allowed their children to get married, uh, falling in love with someone which was kind of taboo in Kerala and um, they wore dresses which were more suitable for the weather, the humid tropical weather of Kerala. They used to wear a sleeveless dress which was considered taboo in Kerala. They used to wear short skirts which was taboo in Kerala. But people in Kerala used to wrap this 8 meter sari around them in that humid weather, sweat through their clothes and it was not, not a problem, you see. But you think about it, they were far ahead of the rest of Kerala in those respects and I think I would appreciate them for those things, you see. Adur Bhasi's character in Chattakari was uh, an overstatement or an exaggeration um, of uh, a typical Anglo-Indian dad. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, any of them were like that. Um, they, they used to socially drink but that doesn't mean that uh, they were always drunk for any reason whatsoever. No, um, that's not a real um, characterization of uh, what an Anglo-Indian dad was. Yeah, there were a few inter-community marriages uh, among the Anglo-Indians but uh, not common but not unusual either. There was a teacher married to a doctor who was um, not an Anglo-Indian. Uh, there was uh, this uh, lady called Rita who was married to a Hindu, I remember that. Uh, there was uh, another teacher, Mary Godang, I think her husband also was not uh, an Anglo-Indian. There were a few marriages like that, but uh, very uh, rare, rarely I should say, not common though. The Anglo-Indian men were all handymen. Uh, they were all very good uh, at um, uh, things like... Um, repairing their own motorbikes. I would never uh, see an Anglo-Indian boy take his motorbike to the workshop. He would pretty much uh, strip it into parts, uh, fix it all, paint it and put it together and like make it becomes a new bike. That's a very common thing, you see. Uh, the ladies were also very good uh, at um, tailoring, various things that they used to keep themselves occupied. Of course, a lot of them were uh, well-educated ladies, teachers, um, both in colleges and schools and um, they, they were very good uh, interesting community there was um, there was some very intellectual people as well like Denzel Bob who of course I didn't know him from the Thanksgiving days but he had moved on to Madras where he had studied and then moved to Bangalore I got to know him later in life but uh, sadly Denzel passed away he was actually a very a intelligent guy, very very well read, very knowledgeable about um, India's uh, spiritual history and um, he was a great um, student of uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti and things like that. So there were all, all kinds of people, they were very well educated, um, very, very, uh, I should say, very interesting uh, society that uh, Thangajari had. Uh, right from the uh, mid to late 60s I think a lot of them started moving out of Thangasheri um, mainly um, I think it is probably to got to do with the fact that um, they could find better jobs in uh, in the metros of India like a lot of them moved off to Bangalore Bombay or some place like that of course then the migration to Australia was the earliest one and um, a lot of them migrated to Australia where they would have done well, you know, which uh, I'm happy for all of them. Of course, you can't uh, expect people to uh, stick back in the small area for the sake of maintaining the heritage. Um, they have to move on in life. Uh, and that's how all cultures are, I think. You know, cultures, you don't need to cling on to cultures. Yes, it's good when you talk about it from nostalgia but um, but otherwise for individuals I think moving on in life is more important is it not? The Anglo Indians they spoke very fluent English between themselves it was only when they had to perhaps go to a market or uh, go to a shopkeeper they had to talk in uh, English mixed with Malayalam and of course their Malayalam was always very accented and I would 
attribute that poor pronunciations of Malayalam to the attitude that the school had. The school had this silly attitude that you shouldn't talk Malayalam in school as if to say that if you talk Malayalam, your English will be adversely affected, which I think was very silly because uh, language is not only about conversing, it's also about thinking and if you are able to talk multiple languages, you are much more adept at thinking using those languages, is it not? The spoken English in Tangasheri was definitely appreciable and that's the reason why there were a lot of people from outside of Tangasheri who used to come to Tangasheri only to learn spoken English from certain uh, teachers, mostly all of them Anglo-Indian teachers. Of course, the, there was this um, exaggerated stories about Tangasheri's English mixed with Malayalam or although not called Manglish those days, uh, there was this story for example, some of them are good and interesting so it should, it, it will be amusing. For example, there was this story about this little boy who is looking up to the coconut tree and he sees this, uh, the coconut leaf falling so he is telling his mother, Mummy, Mummy, Ola Madal coming, Raniko, Raniko. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of slang there. In fact, uh, Tangsheri used to have a lot of anglicized names for uh, usual Indian food like uh, the putta used to be called the bamboo cake and the papadam used to be called the dinner biscuit and the best of all was, you know what, idiapam used to be called thunder cake. <laughs> Yeah, the boys' school had um, good teachers like uh, Mrs. Sheila Dakota, who was an English teacher. Then there was a um, very popular teacher, although she hasn't taught me, Miss um, Eula Fernandez. She used to teach in both schools uh, at different times. Uh, she was considered a very good teacher. Uh, and of course, there were a lot of, lot of Anglo Indian teachers uh, when I was in primary school, but then what happened was that um, uh, sometime in the late 60s, the school, they um, terminated the services of a lot of those older teachers, possibly because they did not have um, uh, degrees like BA and all that those days. Uh, but that really affected the quality of English in the school, uh, having terminated the services of a lot of uh, good old teachers um, or experienced teachers. And then they had to fill the, those positions with teachers, probably with better qualifications, credentials, um, who came from other parts of Kerala. But that actually, I think that at that point, uh, some of this... Um, the quality of spoken English um, by the teachers uh, was possibly adversely affected, I think so. Uh, there were other exemplary teachers as well. Uh, for example, there was one uh, Master C.P. Abraham. He actually came to our school f with about 30 years or so of experience teaching in Malaysia. And he came there and he was a very completely different from all other teachers. He, 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 is, he was very focused on only teaching, nothing else, no nonsense. And um, his classes were so interesting that uh, uh, I, I really didn't know biology was such an interesting subject till he taught it, you know. So there were some very remarkable teachers uh, who had joined the school during our times as well. Yeah, some of the teachers were very creative. I should specially mention um, Ms. Zeta Fernandez, uh, who was actually always responsible for most of the arts and dramatics uh, in the school. And uh, she was a very, very creative person. She used to kind of um, uh, compose her own uh, music, uh, combining Malayalam and English poetry, uh, songs. Uh, she used to kind of have fusion uh, events on stage. Uh, she was a very, very creative person. That um, she, she really stood out as, as a very creative teacher. And Liking and disliking the school um, depends very much 
on the relationship that the teachers had with the students uh, and that I have seen um, it vary from time to time. Uh, at the time I joined, um, this uh, headmistress there was uh, Miss Mary J. Commands, a very dignified lady. Uh, she was very kind to the students. Um, uh, she was able to run the school uh, as a peaceful place um, without much um, corporal punishment and violence. But um, her replacements who came were people... Uh, uh, who opted for corporal punishment as the method to control students and we've seen a lot of bad incidents happen during those days um, because uh, children they tend to be anti-establishment when uh, when they are they, when violence is used against them to control them and there were even instances of um, once this uh, principal uh, who used to always walk around with a cane and uh, used to beat up children for uh, even small things like having talked in the class or something like that. Um, there was this incident where uh, an Anglo-Indian boy, actually he's a nice uh, guy, he was called to the principal's office and um, uh, for something that happened in the class, the principal started using excessive violence uh, on him, beating him a few rounds and at the end of it, uh, it pushed the boy to the point where he actually snatched the cane from the principal and started hitting the principal back. So those are kind of things, undesirable events that happen because of violence that is used against children. And uh, corporal punishments were a bad uh, practice of those times those um, those practices are more worrying because they would not have brought out the best in those children yeah children of course they may be mischievous they may commit errors but i think if the 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 leaders of the institution uh, opt to violence uh, rather than tactfully handling such situations it will lead to unpleasant uh, incidents and this these kind of incidents are because of that but i should also say that after i left school there was a priest a principal dr ferdinand kayavil there who i noticed from the appreciation of the boys of his time that he must have been very popular and a very tactful and loving person uh, to in in terms of his tactics to nurture the students a lo lot of the boarding houses were run by anglo indian families and i think um, they took a very um, responsible role for ensuring that these children were well taken care of and i think um, i don't think anybody really paid them uh, any boarding fee that is commensurate with the kind of responsibilities they took. Um, they were actually doing a real community service um, because the school was uh, very popular uh, not only in Kwailon but because similar schools were not there um, in Kwailon, Trivandrum and the central Travancore area. Most of the students were uh, in the boarding houses were from uh, away from Koilon, from towns away from Koilon. So I think what these boarding um, mistresses or the boarding uh, operators did was a great community service um, for towards um, the supporting that education system that was the existent in that place at that time. Uh, I would really be thankful to them, although I myself have not been uh, a boarder in any of those boardings um, but yeah they did a great service um, really a remarkable service they did for uh, the school and the students there yeah there are so many such funny stories there was this anglo-indian girl and a non-anglo-indian boy who also is from tangasheri so they were slightly friendly but um, it was mostly in secret so one day he 
tries to attempt to walk along with her on the street and then as somebody is coming from the opposite side she tells him go away go away people might see me talking to an indian boy so <laughs> we used to have fun teasing this guy as, as the indian boy <laughs> every friday evening there used to be this uh, gathering at this community center uh, on the beach um, and what happened was that um, the same girl uh, was in the community center and this boy was trying to get her out to come this was after dark so the 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 functions going on in the community center and this guy he asks the girl to come out to the beach side so she tells him like this you know wait uh, so and uh, <laughs> he comes and tells us you know she's asked us to wait and then what happens <laughs> he goes near her and then he realizes that she's saying i'll slap you and slap you <laughs> Both the boys and girls, they were very good at music. In fact, um, they used to be, Tanky used to have its own bands. Um, that is uh, mainly Ronald Rosario, who is still there. He and his brothers and his cousins, they used to have initially the Crusaders and then the Hitchhikers. There used to be another family who used to have this band called the Hypnotics. I think you should meet uh, Ronnie and talk to him. He'll tell you the history of the music uh, and then of course they were also active in the church choir um, so uh, they, they they are a very interesting group of youngsters that were there that, those days uh, besides being a musician or a singer uh, ronnie also had this um, uh, pen pal relationship with uh, jim reeves's wife mary reeves you should talk to him about that uh, he used to have collectibles that Mary Reeves used to send him after Jim Reeves passed away and uh, we used to look look up to those things as great treasures that Ronnie had in those days. Uh, I'm sure he'll have some of that even now. <laughs>